start with introducing myself so before that uh, can you please all write in chat like is my voice audible just write yes there so i can see like let's make the session interactive fine fine great it's so i'm very happy to see you all yeah so i am akshita gupta i'm currently a, a unity 3d developer at zn autonomy i've been an mlh fellow also mlh mentor i love to take part in hackathons and i never leave a month without taking part in mlh hackathons or any of the hackathons so let's start so before uh, moving forward uh, this is a giveaway alert that i have to tell you like this is my birthday man as well and uh, if you like this session just take the screenshot of any of the part and uh, just uh, tag me on twitter and you will be entered in the giveaway to win these uh, cool github stickers so let's move forward with the mlh uh, fellowship so what is mlh fellowship before going that let's talk about what is mlh because i think most of you don't know what is major league hacking what is this community all about and how is it uh, providing this mlh fellowship so mlh fellowship is provided by mlh and mlh is major league hacking international community of uh, developers students and uh, working professional so they provide lot of hackathons international um, and also they provide uh, various workshop their global hack week also this that happen every um, month this global hack week there where they provide webinars rela related to new technologies open source so they have a, a, like a fellowship called as mlh fellowship it's a remote internship alternative it's a 12 week program where lot of uh, product based company these are they sponsor it and they provide their open source project where you can collaborate in them and you can learn uh, like real life uh, real life projects collaboration you can uh, collaborate it in them and also you can gain experiences this is all working from home it's a remote internship alternative and also at last you will get an educational stipend so the eligibility criteria of this fellowship is you, that the participants must be above 18 if you are above 13 then the and uh, like uh, so you have the have to get the parent permissions to participate in this program you should be country resident this program require you 30 hours per week and uh, this is for the full time participation for part time participation you can work for 10 to 20 uh, hours a week you you must be fluent in english when you are participating because it's an uh, region level program like many participants they are coming from nigeria australia and you should have a grip or you can say you should be comfortable in any one of the programming language you should have good quality uh, like access to uh, this internet because this is a remote program so you should be connected to uh, good quality internet and that will be tested in the interviews round as well so now before uh, like telling about the main fellowship i'll talk about prep fellowship so prep fellowship you can say a quick version of this mlh uh, fellowship where you can uh, know about what main fellowship is all about it's a three week program where you will like uh, get to know how to contribute in the projects uh, you can be uh, like you can work on different projects in mlh terms the groups of members they are called as pod and the members uh, they are called as pod members so you will be working on different pods uh, you will be allotted uh, different members and you will be collaborating on different open source projects this is not only about open source collaboration but it, the main part is the interaction that you will get in this program this program don't have a stipend but these uh, fellows or prep fellows they are given a priority in of application over the main fellowship so you will be prioritized in the application process for the main fellowship like you won't be giving the initial interview you will be directly taken to the technical round so i always suggest uh, if you are very uh, new to this uh, uh, like mlh fellowship if you want to try it try out this prep fellowship currently i saw there were no open program for prep fellowship but uh, they might be opening this prep fellowship application soon yeah so uh, this this prep fellowship is organized by main mlh fellowship only so you can just check out or you can ask in the discord channel, channel of mlh like when the prep fellowship applications are opening so you can apply for it before the main fellowship now comes the main mlh fellowship 
there are three tracks currently that are available in the site first one is the software engineering site reliability and the web3 engineering so what is the software engineering track so there are many uh, partners of mlh like they are github solana meta aws google so these are all the partners and they provide their open source project where the fellows they contribute in those projects so you will get a real hands on experience on contributing these projects so they are connected with the software engineering uh, track now let's talk about site reliability engineering there were questions uh, in the google form like what project should i submit for site reliability what is site reliability so site reliability is nothing but devops so devops is called it's like a hybrid of systems and software uh, you should be knowing devops to make the system running if you have heard about docker kubernetes so these are fall into these are the tools of uh, devops so if you are comfortable and you have made some projects in devops you have an interest in it so you can apply for this uh, site reliability engineering track Web three is for like the blockchain related projects. Like last year, I saw there were participants. They were contributing in Solana uh, for Web three projects. So, like if you're interested in cryptocurrencies projects, NFTs, so you can apply for Web three engineering track. So. it's not like you only can apply on the any of the like any one track but you can apply for all three tracks and mlh team will select you on the basis of your interview round your fellowship application your interest to assign you which of the like tracks you you should be uh, participating in it so like upcoming batches there are three batches of mlh fellowship there are spring summer and fall batch currently fall batch applications has been opened and the deadline for asia applicants it's for 31st july other applicants it's 31 august and uh, this this fall application will start from 18 september so if you are willing to apply for mlh fellowship then you can go to mlh fellowship uh, the site and uh, you can apply for it then let's talk about application process so there were many questions regarding this application process they were uh, like participant they were so much confused like what code sample they can put how to write these essays and yes these two main parts like this code sample and the essays they are really important for the application because these are the parts that will define uh, your selection criteria you know there are total 10000 plus application in mlh fellowship and the selection rate is like a uh, kind of 2.3% or even 1% they select very less candidate so we have to be like very specific on our application when we are applying for it so please focus on this um, uh, these upcoming slides because these are very much important try to take a screenshot if you if you want so yeah i am telling everything like on the ba what basis they select so just please focus on them so the first part is the code sample part before the code sample they only ask about in which languages you are comfortable how much time you can uh, like give to mlh fellowship so these everything you can fill now the in the code sample part whatever code sample that you add so code sample suggests not only a kind of sample project but it suppose a complete whole project that you have done before so whatever project that you submit if you are submitting a group project then it should be like it should demonstrate your abilities like whatever part you have done you should be highlighting that that part because at the time of interview you will be explaining that part to the interviewer and they will be asking question on the basis of that and like suppose if you are applying for it so like participant they are asking like can i make the project right now just only for the fellowship but it's like if they can understand if you are making only for the fellowship so it's not like you should not make any project specifically for fellowship it should solve a real world problem like it should be a real project uh, that you have made like suppose if you want to add a project to your resume so you will be making a good project right so try to make a project not only for the fellowship but your for your own learning purposes as well so the project that you will be submitting it should be having a pub, it should be public on github if you are submitting a multiple files project you should be having a very uh, good readme for explaining your project like in the right side you can see this is a link free project i think most of you have used and this is by edi jout if you have heard about it so i really like the readme of this project you can see how beautifully the tech stack is mentioned the quick start like how to run this project is mentioned so your project should have be having very good readme like before going to the code base i can understand your project uh, from your readme only so 
when you have multiple files try to keep them in proper folders try to make them very uh, like in very arranged manner so everything should be visible from like if you have a html css js file you should have a different folders for it if you are making a back end then you have a back end folder for it everything you should mention it properly don't submit very large code bases like they can't be uh, tested like if you're very submitting and the very most uh, very most important part is your code must be deployable somewhere like if you're submitting a web app the like any third person they can see your code uh, like it should be deployable if you are using a backend that should also be working so try to like try to submit a proper code base when you are submitting a project that should be solving a real life problem like some are asking like can i submit a code sample is like can i submit a binary search tree uh, code like dot cpp code dot java code but let me know that uh, is this code is defining uh, yourself like is this code really for if if there are to total how many participants are there so uh, these code application or competitive programming code, these are not allowed in this fellowship. You have to submit a project that is solving a real life problem. Jupyter uh, notebooks are a big no in this uh, fellowship. Now let me tell you what are the some examples of good code samples and uh, um, like a poor code sample. If I talk about a portfolio website that you are submitting, uh, like I have already told, like if you have a project with just HTML, CSS, they won't be accepting that because the simple static sites with no logic, they are not allowed. Uh, they should have a proper uh, like working uh, working site. They should have a JavaScript running a backend if if it is possible. The backend should be there. So these kind of project, a web app with JavaScript, a web server backend only, a mobile application you can submit if you are using Flutter. You can submit that application as well. But try to make a proper readme. Like if you are submitting a mobile application, then in the readme you should having a screenshot of that application, a proper screenshot. If you are submitting a command line app, that you can submit. Now the examples of this uh, poor code samples are if you are submitting a Jupyter notebook, IPNB files. So these are not acceptable. If you are submitting a code from a tutorial, that is also not acceptable because tutorial codes, they, they can really understand if they are from tutorials, if you are copying somewhere, so that is not acceptable. Simple static sites, if you are only using HTML, CSS, so that is not, uh, that is not acceptable. So if if like there is uh, like competitive programming solution that is also not acceptable in this then bootcamp coursework they are also not uh, like acceptable so you have to think of a project that is are uh, like solving a real life uh, problem a kind of i will suggest uh, uh, like uh, uh, like there were uh, i asked from the fellows that what project they submitted when i was in mls fellowship so someone like they were they made a project of a kind of um, uh, application in which uh, they were asking uh, people to uh, like they were asking people that that's, that was a really great project it was related to menstrual products if you know uh, so they were uh, asking about uh, the like nearest menstrual product centers they are storing that in the back end and then they are sharing that in the google map so these kind of projects they are really like solving a kind a great uh, issue like many girls are not able to find the menstrual product so uh, the people they can mention the nearest uh, shops or the nearest uh, uh, center so they can really go to those shops if they are in a campus as well so they can submit the, so just an example i gave there are many real life problems uh, that you can solve with your projects now if you don't have an appropriate code sample what you can do so mlx they provide hackathons every weekend uh, like in when you take part in these hackathons you will get to know a lot of participants they are so much eager to take part and to create these uh, projects so just go to mlx.io and check the attend hackathon page you will see right now it is going global hack week so uh, in global hack week you will uh, check uh, like there are some tutorials and what they were giving like how to get started with Git, github open source the lot of uh, learning opportunity that is available in global hack week so you can join that also upcoming hackathon i can see pride hack is coming so you can take part in this current hackathon you just try to interact with uh, people so you can take part in that now Let's talk about the essays. So if I talk about essay, these are your first impression. They show like how passionate you are uh, when you are writing these essays. So always take time when you write. 
don't write too much detail like if you are explaining your life experiences that is that is okay but try to be specific in those now i'll tell you how to the first question that is why do you want to become an mlh fellow so in this question that is really important like you have to understand why only mlh fellowship you have to answer like there are many fellowship opportunities there are internship opportunity why only you want to take mlh fellowship that you have to mention so you can mention like you can work on real life project when you are uh, when you are taking part in it you uh, then you, you can work on the projects that like they are from the product companies of github facebook and uh, solana labs so kind of project that you can mention you want to contribute in that you have an interest in it you can mention your achievements as well like if you have made a very good open source achievement that you can mention in that uh, in your essays try avoiding grammatical and spelling mistakes in your uh, projects also please uh, please uh, don't make this mistake of writing this uh, uh, like uh, this uh, grammatical and spelling mistake that is a big no uh, into the application team also always do a essay reviewing with your friends and family or fellow alumni if you can ask them to review your essay they can suggest you last and the last but not the least that is be truthful when you are writing this part this is a very most important part that will also be asked in your interviews as well you can take the screenshot of this like how to write uh, the essays what some key uh, key points that you can mention like you have you have will get an opportunity to work on the open source project you can add value to your open source contribution also there are many mentors that are from varying skill sets so you can you will get an opportunity to interact with other developers as well so next question is what perspective or experience that you will bring to the fellowship to strengthen our community that is the most important part mlh fellowship is a diverse community there are a lot of de developers they are from different backgrounds and you have to mention your previous community experience if you are a beginner you are not able to interact so much try to mention like uh, when you started coding uh, what inspired you to like you have uh, taken this um, computer science as your main uh, as your major um, course work you can mention these things your you mention your unique qualities in this question like how you will help other community men, uh, like uh, members so you can mention your previous community experience if you if you have your own community how you have helped other participants like if you are good if you are good in technical documentation you can mention that you can help in technical documentation this is just the examples that i am given you can write as much as you like as much as you can uh, just to improve your answers in this and uh, now if i talk about the next question is anything you would like to tell us so this is a optional question but i advise you to write each and everything this is the opportunity to show if you have won any coding competition that you can mention in this so you can tell everything that you like don't skip this question because this is a really important to define yourself just write each and everything whatever you have done uh, till now what achievements that you have got now the first phase is the initial interview phase in the initial interview phase after the after the like this phase you will only get if your if your first application your essay the code sample it is accepted then you will go to the initial interview phase this is kind of a hr round if uh, like they will check if you are eligible you are how you are passionate about they will also ask the same question like why you want to become a mlh fellow and uh, you, they will check is your audio video quality is up to mark you are open for communication you are fluent in english so this is the hr round so this is also our disqualification round if you are not able to perform well now next part is the fellowship technical interview round so this is the most important round when you qualify the first initial round you will go to the technical interview phase in the technical interview it is a strict 15 minute interview you have to manage your time accordingly in this interview they won't be asking you to write any code or something they will be just looking whatever code sample that you have added they they will even asking you to explain your code line by line so you have to like uh, arrange your time you have to mention each and everything of your code you should be knowing everything like how why you have written what purpose you have written and they can also ask you how you will improve your code in future so is your project solving real life problem or um, like the questions only will be asked from your project so there will be not uh, you don't have to prepare so much very uh, like uh, uh, like the project that is not related to your project you can only learn your uh, like you can only uh, think about your project like how you can improve it and um, further 
the the main question that is asked is is it solving a real life problem this is very much important uh, to the interviewer so this is a very important round for the technical interview purposes now fellowship project matching when you go out of this stage of technical uh, when you qualify this stage you are taken to the project matching phase so this is the uh, phase that takes a lot of time even it can take like two months as well so in the project matching phase uh, you will be there will be a final review whatever things you have mentioned in your first application like you have mentioned in which languages you are comfortable so they will match a particular project with your application so this phase is very much important you have to be patient in this phase because uh, many participants uh, they ask question like my project matching phase has reached to like two months they are taking and they are not responding so you have to be patient in this project matching phase now after this if your project is matched if you are selected now let's talk about uh, that you are you entered in, into mlh fellowship now let's talk about benefits of mlh fellowship now this mlh fellowship it will provide collaboration exposure and also like many different developers they join and even there are beginners that they want to learn about uh, the like coding contribution so there will be as this is a remote internship so you will this is a flexible uh, you will get flexible working hours you can take your time there will be a proper mentor support there will be lightning talks stand up sessions i'll talk about these also you can uh, this this mlh fellowship will be a highlight to your resume right now if you mention open source in your resume the interviewer will mainly ask the questions on this like if you have contributed in open source so internship opportunities you will get according to mlh like one out of four candidate they get internship opportunities by the partner company so you will also get the internship and placement opportunities when you join this fellowship when you after doing everything there is also an educational uh, stipend that is up to 5 thousand dollars it depends on the country wise but for the indian candidates you will receive up to 1.2 k uh, 1.2 thousand usd and uh, account like for to maintain your financial uh, financial expensive and uh, my fellowship experience so my experience is, uh, was really great when i joined the fellowship you can see will russell uh, he was the program he is the program manager of mlh fellowship so we had this lightning talks every week we used to share our different um, uh, like uh, whatever stuff we have read till now our daily stand up sessions were there what kind of works we have done uh, any problem that we have faced and so and you can see like i gave a session on kubitro i'll even share that link with you all like what if you have to give a particular session a technical session to other candidates so they want that every candidate uh, they should be uh, like uh, so much uh, like they should be uh, having a code collaboration and also they should be learning like how to interact with other developers so in 2 minutes this uh, meeting is going to end so you can join the same uh, you can join from same link again and i'll explain further and for the qna session as well so now mlh hackathon experience so my mlh hackathon experience was really great uh, great i i already told you that i never leave a month single month by uh, like without taking part in hackathon you can see lot of swags i have won but not about swags but i have like uh, given a, like i have taken a lot of opportunities from this mlh hackathon i have interacted with so many developers even i have learned a lot um, i have failed in hackathon then only i have got uh, experiences in this um so i i just suggest like i'll take a, a session on on how to ace these hackathons how to take part in it how to interact with other people now only a minute is remaining for our talk i'll just uh, end it with this a birthday cake like uh, last year um, my sister uh, like ordered this uh, very uh, special cake for my birthday because i was so much into hackathons and development so he, she created that cake so now uh, let's uh, this end this session thank you so much for listening and join the next meeting for the question answer session this is going to be uh, like this meeting is going to end now uh, yeah i'll answer every question in the next one because uh, less than a minute is remaining okay so please join the next uh, the meeting again same meeting